Tea Tribe. Welcome back. I am so excited to be back. Last week, as you guys know, Barstool had off, so I recorded my episode from like my bed, and I was half dead, even though it was like a good episode because we talked about fertility. So if you didn't listen, check it check that one back out but anyway Mackenzie's here with me my producer what's going on nothing much how are you good I feel actually like invigorated to be back um because I'm such a workaholic that I like kind of had anxiety not working last week yeah no so me too yeah That's I like, like still tr- was like trying to do work just to like make it seem like same something. and then I was like guilting myself for relaxing yeah and then I'm like I am off I could relax yeah exactly that's uh, the purpose of it what's wrong with us it's like such a sad <laughs> society society that we live in right I have so much to update you guys on and so much to tell Mackenzie about <laughs> um I was like we're gonna catch up on air so first of all I'm going to catch you guys up on what I've been up to the last week and a half or however long it's been. It feels like forever. Then I am going to have Kate from TikTok on. She has become a friend of mine. She is like so cool. She's um, talks really openly about her eating disorder and overcoming it and body image and confidence. And she's just such a down to earth girl. I really, really love her I feel like although we haven't known each other for long I feel such a connection to her so I'll have Kate on then her and I together will answer your ask Alyssa advice questions and then as always we will wrap things up with the spill the tea segment I do have a lot I want to talk about because right now every show that I love is airing at the same time and like there's just so much to say so we will first jump into what the heck I've been going like what the heck's been going on in my life um a lot. So basically, okay, I'm like, which topic do I start with? Because there are so many. <laughs> so what I need to update you, Mackenzie, on is, and and you guys, the Tea Tribe, do you remember like three episodes back or four episodes back, I had Laura Day on. She is an intuitive and a celebrity psychic. She like consults Deepak Chopra, Brad Pitt, Jennifer Aniston, like every single major Hollywood person, good friends with Demi Moore. Um, After the podcast, she was like, you know, you have to come over one day. I get a text from Laura Day last week and she was like, hi, do you want to come over? Like I'm having some doctors over, some physicians, like they're all a lot older than you, but I think it would be great. Yeah. So I'm like, I can't turn down an opportunity to go to this woman's house. Right. Yeah. First of all, I love her so much I feel like she's my mentor now oh my gosh like I don't even though there's an age difference like I am so obsessed with her because she's just so um full of wisdom and what's really cool about her is she doesn't do personal readings oh okay. so just because you're friends with her she's not going to be like here's what you need to yeah. know yep because I think it's like kind of a way for her to like preserve her energy and just she can't really be doing that for just yeah every anyone person. yeah but what she's really great at is I'm like, she's like, what's your five-year plan? Or like, what do you want to do in life? And I'll tell her. And then she'll be like, oh, I'll introduce you to this person and this person. And then here's this person. And Mm -hmm. like, she's just such a wealth of knowledge because she's like 65. Mm -hmm. She She knows a lot of people. She's so connected. I feel like she is just the kindest soul. And like, I'm going to hang out with her again next week. (laughs) That's amazing. I love it. So you guys, I actually have found such like a great, friendship in her and she so it was so interesting because she had over me two doctors who are surgeons Mm -hmm. female surgeons and then one of the surgeons brought a friend yeah and I was kind of like not sure what to expect but this is like how an intuitive like this would only happen at an intuitive's house so it was pouring raining in New York that day I could knock an uber and I have like a lot of anxiety about showing up late I think that's super rude Mm -hmm. so I was just like I texted her I'm like I'm so sorry I can't get a car so she was like don't worry no one can like it was the day that there was the flooding in New York yeah it was so bad so we all showed up at the exact same time. Oh my gosh. Which was like great because I would have felt weird walking in late alone. Yeah, true. So even something like that, like all of us showed up at the exact same time. We get upstairs and I start talking to the women. I've been thinking about, I haven't talked about this publicly, guys, and maybe it's something I could talk about with Kate because I know she's also thinking about it. I've been thinking a lot um, recently and I didn't tell my mom, I didn't tell my sister I've been wanting a breast reduction and it's because now that I'm working out with a trainer 
I'm noticing how much sports bras are like really hurting like the back of my neck area. Yeah. Yep. And I'm like, obviously, like I would love to lose weight and do X, Y, Z, but I'm like, it would feel so much nicer to just be able to like have that weight off yeah, my exactly. chest. Because like, <laughs> it's not like you can lose that weight really. Like, I, like I, unless I, you I get won't. Because yeah. even when I lose weight, I still have huge boobs. Yeah. So, and I've had them since fifth grade. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think they're going down. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been thinking about this. I haven't vocalized it. I sit down. I'm talking to one of the women and I'm like, oh, what kind of surgeon? Like, what kind of doctor are you? And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm a surgeon. And I said, oh, that's so great. What kind of surgeon? She said, plastics. Oh. I said, oh, I've been thinking about getting a breast reduction. Yeah. She goes, that's my specialty. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. like, it's so Wait, weird. that's wild. Like, this is how intuitives are. Like, she kind of just, like, felt like this group of people needed to meet. But yeah. she didn't know why. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, She just had a gut feeling. So then we're talking. And then over the last 10 days, I read um, two and a half books. I'm still finishing one. And I, like don't read that much and I just found this new love for reading because I ordered a new Kindle and about two to three years ago I started writing a book and amazing yeah I have about like five chapters yeah and I stopped because I just like didn't know the direction I wanted to take it in yeah I kind of just was I I know I'm gonna write a book in life Mm -hmm. but I don't know when I'm gonna write it like yeah. part of me is like do I publish this in 10 years from now yeah. is this some, something I do now like mm-hmm. I'd like my audience to get bigger before I like come out with the book yeah but anyway so I since I've been reading so much I was thinking I really really should start writing again mm-hmm. and then I talked to another woman and she's like oh I'm publishing a book oh my god so I'm like oh my god like I've been thinking I was thinking about this last night yeah. like, and she's like oh I'll tell you all the resources whatever either anyway we all like had resources for each other yeah then there was another woman she was 50 and she just decided to get into mid-sized fashion and modeling oh my God. and like reinvent herself and I'm like what are the so then I was a resource to her like yeah. trying to help her with right. like TikTok and Instagram yeah and it just was like this lovely thing I That's was with so funny older women but I didn't even feel the age difference no yeah like you were a friend you could be friends with them I just absolutely loved them I felt like I was like in an episode of the real hostess of New York oh my god (laughs) that's amazing yeah they were just like fabulous right New York City women yes yeah way more fabulous than the women on the show like yeah yeah. intelligent right smart yeah personable so I just had so fun I know I needed to tell you guys because I'm like what has this become so I feel like Laura is going to be like such a mentor to me and someone that you know, like just really is such a calming force. Um, so I, I really, really enjoyed that. And yeah, so maybe one of these days I will pick up. Oh, speaking of writing the book, guess what, guys? My freaking computer crashed. Oh my God, what? So I don't know if I could even get my book back. I, oh, yeah. I think I put it on Google Drive. I have to check. Oh, then you could. Oh my gosh. And you lost everything. Like I don't know. I'm waiting to You're get getting a it fixed. Genius yeah. bar appointment. Oh my god. And what I'm really pissed about, which I'll talk more in the spill the tea segment, but like all my shows, like I watch a lot of my shows on my laptop mm-hmm. because I don't have a TV in my bedroom. Yeah. And sometimes you know, like the hour before bed, you don't really want to be on the couch. You wanna unwind in yeah. bed. Yeah, I do the same thing. So like I haven't been able to watch TV oh yeah oh my gosh I didn't even think of that it's all been a lot um okay and then the last thing I want to talk to you guys about before we jump into the interview with Kate um is you know I talk about self-care a lot we obviously have the self-care club merch I was talking to my therapist I feel like I mentioned that I go to a therapist every single episode (laughs) um but I'm just an open book and we were talking about the concept of self-care as productivity versus self-care out of self-love so let me rewind so I was explaining to her that sometimes my self-care I make lists and I'm like I need to walk I need to eat healthy I need to do a hair mask and do this and do that and I'm I'm kind of wrapping up like anxiety into like a self-care bow I'm like packaging anxiety into this like self-care bucket and then if I don't do those things if I don't go for the walk that day I'm like hard on myself or I like let myself down Mm -hmm. versus doing self-care out of self-love so it's like 
oh, I'm going to eat a salad today because I'm feeling really dehydrated and like I need nutrients versus I'm going to eat a salad today because I feel fat and I'm disgusting and I secretly hate myself. Yeah. So we were just like talking about that distinction and I was like, wow, that's such an interesting concept because as I talk about self-care, I think it's important to kind of look through this lens of, am I doing this out of self-love or am I doing this out of Mm self-hate? So if going for the walk is self-hate because you really just need to relax and watch TV because you've been busy, it's actually a bigger act of self-love to give yourself that hour to watch the trash TV than it is to go on a walk and like bash yourself the entire time. So just wanted to bring up that concept because I thought it was like, really interesting and it's something I'm working on because I realize I'm like this list person and I will make lists like clean your room clean the dishes do xyz and then if I don't do them I'll beat myself up yeah and I'll be like why didn't you clean your apartment today you're such a piece of shit right you know what I mean (laughs) yeah and it makes it 10 times worse it makes it 10 times worse Mm -hmm. so like I'm really trying to work on that balance between having like just being um intuitive and having integrity so I like hung up a sign in my kitchen I'm like really big on this and it says intuition Uh and then it says integrity okay so intuition for me is like intuitively listening to what I want to do like do I want a smoothie or do I want a cheeseburger like what do I not like what do I think I want Like, what do I actually, what's my body craving? Yeah. Or do I want to sleep in an extra hour because I need rest? Mm -hmm. Or am I sleeping in because I'm feeling lazy and, you know what I mean? Yes. So intuition with that and then integrity with not um, canceling on myself so much. Because if I make a promise to someone else, I stick by it. But if I make a promise to myself, I bail on it a lot. Yeah. I don't know if you do that or like, are you that kind of person or like, if you're like, Oh, I'm going to work out today. Will you follow through? It depends. It's like probably like 50, 50 most days. Yeah. But no, I do feel that way. Cause I'll be like, Oh, if I, if I'm doing something, say it's on the weekend on a Saturday and I'll say, okay, I'm going to get up early beforehand and work out because I'm going to be eating and drinking and whatever. And then if I don't do that, it just, I'm like upset the whole day because I'm like, why didn't I just get up early and do that? Exactly. And I like beat myself up. So yeah, I do a like very similar thing. I think a lot of us do. So that's why I want to work on integrity with myself. Like what like you wouldn't let down a personal trainer if you had him booked right. or her booked. Yeah. So why are we so quick to let down ourselves? Yeah. And like apparently, this is what I've read in books and this is what therapists say. Every time you do that, you chip away a little bit at your self-worth. Oh, okay. So like you're you actually are chipping away at your own confidence mm-hmm. and your own self-worth because you're like, I'm not worthy, I'm not reliable, I don't follow through on my promises. And I feel like I always bail on myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that. Yeah, I do it like back to the working out thing, but I do it like in my workouts too because I used to go to like a speed and agility trainer and it would be when I was in high school and it would be with other kids that I went to high school with or from other high schools. And like when I'm working out now, I'll think like when I was there, I would never stop doing the workout because you're with other people and you're just not going to stop and like let everyone else down. So now when I do it, I'm like, okay, just pretend you're at like you're training with other people and you can't let them down either. So you got to finish now too. Yeah, you have to kind of like push yourself yeah. because for whatever reason, and my my therapist asked me, she's like, why do you quit on yourself? Mm-hmm. And I was like, because no one knows. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. No, <laughs> but literally me. nobody's going to know. It doesn't matter. No one no. And it's like this like dirty little secret. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I don't know. I I know a lot of people do this and I think it's very common, but I also think there are a lot of people that aren't this way Mm -hmm. like my friend Jill she's like she's training for the marathon wow she wakes up and she gets her ass out there and she trains every single day right yeah and like she really doesn't let herself down much Mm -hmm. like my friend Jenna is also really good at it like if like she's gluten-free and dairy-free and she knows if I eat that I'm gonna feel like crap so she doesn't do it whereas I'll be like I'm gonna feel like crap but whatever I'm gonna take the gamble whatever like and it's just like I think it just comes with practice Mm -hmm. to kind of train yourself to be like no I'm making this decision for me because this is gonna make me feel better so I just wanted to bring that up because I felt like a lot of people could probably relate to that and 
Um, you know, I'm always talking about therapy. So if you guys are interested, I do have a promo code for BetterHelp, which I've actually used in the past. And I'm really excited to partner with them because obviously mental health and therapy is something that's so important to me. And it's something that no one should feel shame in. I actually think it's kind of like more embarrassing to not want to work on yourself than it is to be like, no, I'm going to fix myself. So anyway, um, BetterHelp, it's customized. It's online therapy. It offers video, phone, or even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want if you don't want to, which is like amazing. But I recommend you do the camera thing because it kind of just makes it a little bit more personal. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you could start communicating with your therapist therapist in just 48 hours. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised at what you might gain from it. And you could just see if it's for you. So this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and my listeners get 10% off with their first month at betterhelp.com slash Alyssa. It's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Alyssa, A-L-Y-S-S-A. So don't forget to check them out. I'm really excited to have this entire, you know, like code for you guys because I think that a lot of you will really, you know, benefit from it. Not that I think anything's wrong with anyone, but we could all use... We could all use a therapist. Um, okay, so with all of that said, I'm going to get into my conversation with Kate. So we will check back in after. We will answer your Ask Alyssa questions and then join me to spill some tea. All right, guys, I am here with Kate Norca Lunas, a.k.a. Big Daddy, a.k.a. Kate. Kate from TikTok or Kate. Or just Kate. Or um, deranged and foul. Yeah, foul and deranged. Oh. <laughs> Grateful and satisfied. You know. Just Someone everything. DM'd me and goes, can you please ask her about her Instagram bio? Because I'm very confused. There's a lot going There's on. There's a lot going on. Because for someone that doesn't know you, when yeah. they look at your page and it's literally like, hi, I'm Kate. Foul and deranged. Big daddy. Whatever. Like, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. No, but also people like wanted the foul and deranged merch so bad. So I was like, I have to put it in my bio. I can't just like keep saying this shit and then like not have it in my bio. And that was a whole like, that's just so funny to monetize things off of these like fucking haters. Like it's the best. It's so funny. I literally made a tired and sexy crew neck and like sold out. I'm like, of all the things, yeah. like, this is yeah. what you want. Yeah. People I, love that. I do though feel like the big daddies and the tea tribe would be great friends. Oh, thousand percent they're like the same person you know what we should do like what? just go to a bar one night and just just have, bring it on people and yeah. just be like hey guys we're here come yeah. through no I've literally I don't know like with the whole like COVID stuff like I, I'm also trying to still be like careful because I know people yeah are, I mean I think that like for the most part everyone's kind of like it's, getting back it's to back. normal yeah but I definitely have been trying to do like meetups and like want to do these things and sometimes like I will just do that like I'll be out of out out of place <laughs> and I'll be like I'm here yeah, <laughs> like, yeah like, like, come, come find come me, see me. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm still here for another 10 minutes but um I also just then worry about safety things but like mm -hmm. I don't know you know because people are weird people are weird big weirdos out yeah. there yeah. yeah we've talked about like having to be you know careful about like exposing our apartments and stuff yeah you know yeah it's really scary just because especially like for Hoboken area it's so small and so condensed like it's mm -hmm. it's a mile long so like anyone could really like if you know the area so I really don't show like yeah. out my window I don't show like certain angles just because I get nervous about that stuff not that like I would want to like I see people outside of my apartment and I'm like fuck like they probably know Wait, that I'm I live here <laughs> so Kate did my favorite thing there was this guy in her old building what was his name Brian down I'm like friends with him now it's him and his fiance they're so fucking nice but it was the creepiest thing I have ever experienced I can't even explain it so Kate like just started posting on TikTok like hey I ran into this guy in my elevator like he recognized me from TikTok he lives directly below me yes. so then she would scream she would pound on the floor and be like Brian yeah yeah no but you know like that you know what the scariest part about that whole interaction I just talked about like with him about a month ago because there was a package in the old building and he like texted me and was like hey like I have a package for you and I was like great Stop. thank you and and I was like saying how weird that whole interaction was because like for me 
my home is like my safe space, mm-hmm. you know? So like I, and at the old building, I would, when I would open the front door, I would like run to the elevator just because like, that's like what my roommate and I used to do. Uh-huh. And like, I would run to the elevator, hit it. So like, I wouldn't hear like, and if I heard someone coming through the front door, I, I don't want to talk to them. Like this mm-hmm. is like at the peak of when like social interaction, my social interaction was just like shit. Yeah. It's you like know? COVID and like all yeah. we have is TikTok. Yeah. So like I literally like ran to the elevator, like was pressing the door to like shut the door because I heard someone coming and he stops the door. He stops it. And I was like, oh fuck. And then he goes, you're that girl from TikTok. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, I live underneath you. Like it was just like so fucking creepy. And then he turns out to be this like, like he's like so funny and so nice and his fiance is amazing. Um, but yeah, I started screaming like, do you want breakfast or do you want like dinner? Or, like, come on up. In her video, she'd be like, Brian, people, what's going People on? thought that he was fake, but he's not. He's a real person. Oh, I fully knew he was real. Yeah. And I, lo- whenever you would like scream through the floor to Brian, it just, it's so funny. it brought me so much joy. It's so funny. So TikTok you blew up obviously for people that don't know who you are my audience I'm gonna I'm gonna tell them who you are then okay, you, tell you me. fill in the blanks yep, tell them all right Kate <laughs> this is who she born and raised no I'm kidding she started TikTok over quarantine right yep. mm-hmm. you blew up talking about like kind of like food freedom and like making peace with like your eating disorder it was path. honestly like the the videos that I was putting out they were for me like I yeah. had like you realize for you they were they were for me <laughs> but they were also for other yeah. people but I I was making these videos just talking about my eating journey and going through an eating disorder and trying to like cope with this journey and figure mm-hmm. it out because it's not a it's not a sprint it's a marathon when in recovery you don't yeah. it's not one day you just wake up and like that's why I try to tell people that like everyone's journey on this recovery is different and mm-hmm. so is mine like and what I try to do on social is just be so transparent about like hey I'm having a bad day like my thoughts are like shitty I'm not feeling good about yeah. myself but at the end of the day I'm fucking hot and I love myself you know mm-hmm. and having this food freedom and intuitively eating and eating what you want and stopping when you're full continuing when you're hungry you know and I was making these videos for myself and I look back at some of the first videos that I made and I really like have my whole perspective has con- like changed and these people I owe it to everyone I owe it to my big daddies I literally do just the way that they have helped me because I get messages all the time saying you help me so mm-hmm. much and I'm like you guys have no idea how much you have helped me you know it's so nice it's crazy but like what do you think being on TikTok actually Okay, wait. I have this theory. Let me backtrack. Okay. I think when you vocalize Mm -hmm. your inner demons, Mm -hmm. you could actually heal and make peace with them. thousand percent. Because I was the same way. Like, Mm -hmm. my weight was kind of like, I had put on weight and it was like my guilty little, like, obviously everyone on the outside could tell, Mm -hmm. but I didn't talk about it because Mm -hmm. I was like, if I don't talk about it, it's not there. And I could just face tune my photos and not leave the house. Right. And then you talk about it and then you feel kind of like liberated and then it's you're actually empowering. able to heal it. Mm-hmm. So do you think going on talking about it actually gave you the power to like not have this like secret anymore and yeah. just be like, this is the truth. Yeah. I also just think that like, I completely agree with what you just said because speaking it out loud and making it so it's like very top surface, like it's, it's out there, you mm-hmm. know, there's nothing to hide when you're like speaking about it and being like, I was it, you know, or like yeah. I have these roles or like whatever. Yeah. You're just talking about your body and you're loving yourself no matter what. And you just feel so much better. It's empowering. It's incredible. Like I've never felt better about myself in my entire life. And even on those bad days, I look myself in the mirror. I'm just like, I'm hot. Like I'm so fucking hot. I'm amazing. Like I do not in a cocky way either. Yeah, you yeah. know, just like being just jo- like, just I'm great. How I, how, how I, am. I am, you know, I don't have to change for anyone. I can be who I want to be, you know? And I also think that like we, we think that everyone's like talking about us and looking mm-hmm. at us and like having these thoughts. No one gives a fuck. So like, why are you, why are you like not living your best life and doing everything that you want to do? Because at the end of the day, no one cares. Like they might talk about you with their friends for like two seconds, but yeah. you'll be two seconds of their conversation. Uh-huh. You know, no one gives a shit. Yep. I was saying to my mom actually this weekend, I was like, I feel at peace with myself, mm-hmm. even though I don't look different necessarily Mm -hmm. I feel more confident yeah and that's an internal thing Mm -hmm. and I think that when you start to just accept yourself and Mm -hmm. be like this is who I am and like dress for your body instead of like saving the clothes that maybe you'll fit into one day actually you just made a TikTok Mm -hmm. about this I just did this this weekend because I I'm going to Boston seeing my friend and I'm really excited we're going out but like I just have nothing that fits me like right at the moment like I've gained a little weight 
and before I would never even talk about that. I would never say, hey, yeah, like you I don't want to draw attention. No, to it. but like I, I also want to be someone that like I needed when I was little. So mm. like this is just like having these open conversations, making things like just so normal, yeah. you know. And so I did. I posted. I was eating ice cream. I like stopped. I had a me day. I went and got my nails done with my friends, and then they we all kind of went our separate ways. I went and got this amazing ice cream. If you've heard of it, it's in Jersey. It's in Cliffs. I don't know where mm. in Jersey. It's by like Long Valley, so like uh. central, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I stopped and got ice cream. I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm going to the mall. I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to find some clothes that fit me and like make me feel good. And like, I was like, I gained a little weight, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to find some clothes that fit and I'm going to feel great, you know? 100%. And what I've learned is like, if you have to buy clothes for the body that you're in now, mm-hmm. even though maybe your aspiration mm-hmm. might be to lose a little weight down the road, then you rebuy clothes. Mm-hmm. I get it. Money's tight. Things thrift. Like you figure it out. Mm-hmm. You can't just like keep hiding yourself waiting to fit in the pants. Whenever I saved clothes in the past that I was like, this is my goal. These are my gold jeans. Mm-hmm. This is my gold dress. It has never worked out in my favor. Let I've me never tell put you, it back on. I've never put it back on. <laughs> I've sat there and I've like, I've shamed myself being like look at look what you didn't mm-hmm. do you know absolutely so i don't keep shit in my closet that i don't wear now do i have a lot in my closet thousand yeah. percent and the like this <laughs> is a whole this is a whole like thing right now because my closet broke when we moved into my new place like the rack fell like so it wasn't it wasn't it must have been broken when we moved in but i didn't see it because we were just like moving and like there was a lot yeah. going on and i put my clothes like it's i took the second bedroom so Con- that's connor's like work area mm. but like i took the second bedroom for my closet because oh, no. it's bigger yeah and i'm hanging my clothes up and i just hear one night here and i go and i go look in and it's like this it's i've like, had that happen to and me it's so bad and so like connor's <laughs> like why do you have all these clothes like you don't even wear them i'm like yeah because i'm not going anywhere right now like in three months from now when I'm going back to work like Uh yeah I will be wearing these clothes you know so like relax I'm also a girl it's true but you know what the best thing that ever happened to me was I had this woman come to my apartment when I moved into my last apartment and she was like a Marie Kondo expert Mm -hmm. and Marie Kondo's like that woman that's really big in organizing Mm -hmm. and only keeping the things that bring spark joy yeah this woman impacted my life I wouldn't say changed because like I still am a hoarder Not actually, but I still have more than I need. Right. But she really impacted my thought process because when I say we went through every cabinet in my apartment, under my sink, my, all my makeup, all of my underwear, my socks, like literally things that you, your junk drawers. Yeah. Like we went through everything and she made me be like, does this bring you joy? And yeah. I had a hard time with clothes. Like I'd be like, well, like I got that in London and it doesn't fit, but it's from London. So I want to keep it. Yeah. And she just taught me, she was like, okay, look, you could have like 15 sentimental items yeah. that you're allowed to hold on to. You could have like 15 things that maybe you'll fit in one day. No more than that. And everything else if it doesn't bring you joy today, yeah. not yesterday, not tomorrow, you get rid of it. Yeah. So I had like all these blouses and I'm like, yeah, but maybe I'll have an interview one day in five years. She's like, then you buy the blouse again. Yeah. Like she just got so in my head that now I'm like, I don't like having a lot of stuff. Right. Because she just really like made me realize you don't need any of it. That's my problem. Things like all these things bring me joy. I do. <laughs> no, it's it's a, it's really hard. My my biggest thing is my biggest thing is t-shirts. Yes. Like for some reason I have like my high school t-shirts mm-hmm. from like when we went to like states for for like softball. I'm like, why the fuck do I need oh, a same. 2010 states sweatshirt? I have state- all my concert tees. Like it's from- just stupid. No, concert tees though are cool. No. But they're this big. I have my first concert ever in fourth grade, 98 degrees. Like, and then you know that I'm not, you know that I'm not going to be making one of those fucking blankets. Those, yeah. those chuggy ass t-shirt oh, hell blankets. No. Those are so chuggy. So chuggy. The people that make them with their sorority. Yeah, like, no thanks. <laughs> my problem is t-shirts. Like I just have so many and I'm like, I don't wear, I don't wear half of them, but I know that I'll miss them. You know, I know. like I know I will. But since moving, I cleaned out good. And like, mm-hmm. it really is one of those things that you don't, 
you don't miss it when it's gone. You know, like I couldn't you don't even, even tell you. know it's gone. I know. I couldn't even <laughs> tell you what I actually threw away. Well, I noticed when I moved um, home to like my parents for the summer, like two years ago, yeah. just for the two two or three months. So I packaged all my stuff up and then everything that I was going to wear all summer, I just put in a suitcase. Yeah. And like I was living fine right out of that suitcase. Yeah. And then I'm like, what's in the garage? Like you forget what you even have. Yeah, I know. And then you realize like I literally could live with 10 items and I don't even miss anything but can I tell you something too the reason why I'm saving so many things right now is because I like I want them for my kids like no same I'm like these shoes are gonna be fucking sick and my daughter's gonna be so happy that I saved these shoes or this purse or this jacket because I know style comes in it's just a cycle you know so I'm like I have to save these things I know especially with me because I thrift a lot of designer you're right so I'm like this shit's already old. It's right. about to be really old, old by the time I have kids. Like, right. I need to save this. It's so vintage. Totally. <laughs> vintage? Where'd you get that? It's vintage. Yeah, I thrifted it. Yeah. Um, I, I love that. I love everything that you do for, like, body positivity and just, like, being yourself. Yeah. You literally, like, sing online. You dance. You shake that ass. I do. I love when you shake your ass. Thank you. I feel like I have a good ass. <laughs> you, do, you do. You have a very hourglass shape. Yeah, someone was like, you have, this is so cocky, you have a Kardashian <laughs> body, but you didn't buy it. I'm like, you're oh. right, but it's because of these boobs. Oh, yeah, we want to talk about how we both have been saying we want to get breast reductions. Yeah. Did you see my story the other day? I literally posted a, a video like this with my hunchback, and I was like, you guys all want these big boobs, but like, you don't know what comes, the the, the pressure and like the everything that comes with it I'm sorry my like my hunchback during the day is so bad like I literally have my neck goes like this <laughs> like I, I know I'm gonna start well but I know thinking about it now I'm like okay I really should sit you know straight. when I like decided I need one is when I wear sports bras whenever I wear anything with a razor back mm-hmm. it hurts the center it's of like my right, back yeah, yeah you feel it yep. mm-hmm. oh mm-hmm. it's bad buying bras really hard I was doing Mm-mm. like a couple I did a couple TikToks about like some bathing suit companies because I'm like trying to find these things Mm -hmm. for like people not just myself and I fucking hate the comments because no like most of them here's the thing most of them are positive but it's like those don't fit you I'm like no shit like this is exactly why I that's the point that's why I'm making these videos because these bathing suits that say that they're an extra large and like my boobs should be an extra large and they're not you know what I'm saying like they only go up to a certain size in Target so like yeah this is exactly why I'm making these vi- these videos you know suggest something in the comments then let me know what you want me to let me know you want what you want me to try on then you know it's so true and also like when I was a senior in high school way thinner than I am now I was like an extra large top then Mm -hmm. it's like anyone's like my sister is like the skinniest thing and she's like an extra large in top well you know like that's so crazy because I gave my I gave my friend some bathing suits the other day she came and um they like I did them for a haul Mm -hmm. and they literally fit her and she's got like C boobs that's what I'm saying and I'm like how are these ever gonna fit me she goes she looks at it she goes oh these are kind of like big I'm like yeah they might not fit you and she tries them on I look at her I'm like those fit you perfectly not saying that like the size like it doesn't matter like the size does not matter but I'm saying that fits you well yeah even though you're not that size Be- that's my point like when I should have been like a medium right I was like an extra right. large right in a bathing suit right so I'm like what what's like what are the rest of us supposed to do out here it's tough know. it's so tough and then even just buying like bras and everything's so expensive my bras are like a hundred bucks like, how is that? Fi- like, I want to go into a Target and buy a $20 bra. You could literally parachute in my bras. Like, <laughs> same. It would be, it it's would like be hilarious. I, my, my best friend, she's got like, she's got nice boobs, but like, they're yeah. like smaller than mine. Yeah. And I've always wanted just to try her bra on just for yeah. like the shits and giggles because it would just cover up my nipples. I was like, saying, it's like, it would literally just be like, like that. <laughs> <laughs> like you could awesome. wear mine as a hat like you could literally put it on your head oh yeah like if it's raining yeah who needs an umbrella no I don't hey, wait it's gonna rain today I think so like and I didn't bring an umbrella that's what I'll do I'll just take my bra <laughs> just wear it yeah or like wear it as a mask yeah you could do anything you want with with the size bras that we have <laughs> literally but the sky's like, the limit oh yeah it, it's really tough so I think we should get our breast reductions around the same time I would love that the only thing is okay so I really do want to get one yes but I'm like, I want to have kids before I get one. So I asked the doctor. And what'd she say? Because I connected with this woman. It's amazing. Who is a breast surgeon in the city, ironically, okay. this past week. And I said to her, I'm like, I've always been told that I need to have kids before I have a breast reduction. Right. And she was like, false. Okay. She was like, no. She's like, we could still do it in a way where you could 
protect like breastfeed yeah and like it'll be fine and yeah. then this is what i was thinking about i'm like i don't want to get pregnant with this size boobs right because then they're gonna triple bigger i rather get pregnant with smaller mm-hmm. boobs if they're gonna grow again mm-hmm. and then i asked her i said could you get two in your lifetime and she said yes you could do it twice do you know how they do it no they fucking fillet your nipple don't they <laughs> okay so one of my friends got a breast reduction and we were talking about it at work at lunch and i literally almost passed out at lunch they cut this around like, no it's called a lollipop like, yeah, incision this was like two years ago we were talking about it and i got nauseous i was like i was like i'm gonna pass out right now <laughs> because first of all i don't do well with like any of that shit like when i when i go to the gyno i like lean i need someone to come with me because i like pass out i passed out the gyno i literally like when i was like back in high school i went and i and i was like can i go can i use the restroom and i went by myself oh, this is so stupid i went by myself i got a starbucks before okay and i was like can i just use your restroom i was shitting my pants in the restroom i like i finished my business and like i try to like open the door and i see the tunnel vision closing in and I pass out in the gyno this close to like that little stepping stool thing. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. And I almost like cracked my head open. They gave me like that like salt thing and I was like, where am I? So like whenever I go to the gyno, I need someone to go with me because I like fucking hate the doctors. I hate doctors. I'm dying. But um, yeah, so she told me how they do it and they literally like incision like here and then around your nipples to save the nip to save the (laughs) nipple that is why but not for nothing like i don't want my nipples like i don't want my nipple size because my nipple size is kind of big my no mine are great my areola (laughs) my areola is probably this big no oh my areolas are perfect oh see no mine are like bigger for like a big boob but mine are not mine are not mine are like wait isn't there so maybe you should get your no but isn't there like a thing where it's like you can tell what your color your areola is by like your tongue or something or your lips it's, it's, by by your, s- oh. it's by your lips, I think. So like, yours so, are pink. <laughs> <laughs> they're pink, but they're not like, no, they're not, they're not like, they're not like dark though. Do you know what I'm saying? They're like, right. you can't, you really can't see my areola because it's yes. pretty light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and my nipple's pretty small, I would say. <laughs> oh, you just said, wait, my, <laughs> your nipple and your areola is different. Your areola is the thing that the rounded, the nipple, like the nipple <laughs> is just the nipple. Oh, my whole thing is nice sized. Oh, like my my areola is huge. My nipple is small. <laughs> Do you ever see? Okay, wait, wait. Which part's the areola? The circle? The circle. <laughs> Have you ever seen when I was little and I used to see women naked in movies whenever they had a like a long nipple? Talk about sex life. Listen. She has long nipples. She has long nipples. Her boobs are small. She I has long it's... nipples. And I'm like, who? Like, you know what it Do is? Do you think it's after you give birth? Birth. Yep, I think she has kids. Whenever I see like people with long nipples when I was little, I remember yeah. being so confused. My like, nipples don't look like that. I was like, what are those? Does your nipples look like that? No. Okay, so I think it's kids. I think it's kids. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh, not kids that have them. Kids that give you them. Yeah, yeah, like, yes. yeah, yeah, not, no, no, like no, nipples like, like, that nipples, have been like nipples that have been, like, sucked, and, like, nipples that have, like, like, that have had milk in them, like, the boobs oh, that have been milk, right. I think, <laughs> I think that, like, they, they look like that, because I'm pretty sure that girl, <laughs> that girl has those nipples, and I don't, like, my nipples don't look like that. No. No. Wait, okay, so I haven't watched Sex Life yet, because, again, like, I need to be in the mood to watch it's porn, so like, I'm not no, just trying, so but, like, like, I was saying to Mackenzie, like, I'm not just gonna, like, throw on an episode before work. No, totally. Like, don't you feel like you need to be in, like, a mindset? well I watched it in one day so (laughs) yeah exactly yeah no I need to binge it right and I stayed up I had like a headache I stayed up till like 4 a.m watching because I was like I can't I can't go to bed right now knowing all of this information like I need to watch it through was your boyfriend Connor was he in the room or was he not so he played video games for the first two like episodes so he wasn't like in the room and then like he came in he goes are you fucking watching porn I was like (laughs) basically it's amazing like I was like this is incredible this show so he was like watching with me for like the next couple episodes the worst thing with Connor like I fucking love him to death but like when we watch shows together all he does is talk I'm like can you just shut the fuck up please yeah. because I can't like I need I need to actually watch what's going on because mm-hmm. he's like who's this character who's this I'm like you should have started the show when I started yeah. the show because I told you that this was gonna be a good show like <laughs> me and my mom she's the worst because we'll be watching a movie at the same time, yeah. something neither of us has ever seen. Yeah. And she'll she'll be like, who's that person? I'm like, mom, they just introduced them. I don't know either. Yeah. Like, she'll ask me things as if I've seen it before. I'm yeah. like, we are watching the same thing. Yeah. Like, I have no more information no, than you have. I know. <laughs> that's, a, that's exactly how Connor is. That's exactly how Connor I'm is. I'm like, 
Or, or like a major thing will happen. And I'll be like, oh my God, did you see that? She'll be like, oh no, sorry, I spaced out. When you watch it, you need to text me about that episode. I think it's like episode three. three. Mackenzie, have you seen it? No. Oh. Ugh. Episode three, like 20 minutes in. I know. Everyone's like, episode three, 19 minutes in. Do you know Maybe. what it's about? Do no. Have, oh, okay. Because so I'm not going to spoil it then. This oh, is wait, the thing. Is that, the, is that like the shower scene? Yeah. Yeah. I ha- I was oh, Mackenzie watched her, it. I had, they, were, they were like talking about it on another show I edited. So like, I'm literally sitting here at work. I'm like, what were they watching? And I like pull up. I'm like, whoop, got to go. Like, She's I'm at, at work. work. I was like, all right, can't put that Apparently in the show. Apparently it's real. Apparently he's a huge penis. That's what it is. His dick is huge. But it's, I, it's huge. Connor, I like had to like go back and I was like, you have to see this. He goes, I really don't want to see a dude's penis. And I was like, no, you have to. Do they show it both hard and soft? It's soft. And it That's is what fucking I heard. huge. Do you guys want to hear the craziest thing? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> this two weekends ago, I wasn't there. I was like in the city or something. My sister, her husband, and my parents... And some of her friends went to F Cove at the Jersey Shore, which is like a, it's like a party place where everyone docks their boats and parties. Okay. Okay. So they dock the boat, they're partying. They said, a, oh, it was 4th of July weekend. They said they, a boat goes by and this girl lifts up her shirt and flashes like the crowd, which like, I feel like girls flash their boobs yeah. and it's like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> My sister said a guy in response back just whips down his pants with this flaccid penis and starts like windmilling it. And she's with my parents oh no (laughs) here's the thing like you can't like you can't look away like that's the thing like i would be like this she said (laughs) her and my dad and my brother-in-law like they all saw it they were all like what the hell and then my mom goes oh man i missed it (laughs) see that's that's how i would react to i would want i would want to see it she's like i can't believe i missed it my sister's like it's okay mom like (laughs) it's fine it's fine but who just like flaccid penis out flashes like that maybe he was drunk 100% 100% but I feel like men like show a butt to yeah. just full frontal yeah. flash is like pretty bold yeah I mean like I feel like when anyone's drinking because I would do the same fucking thing like I would like I like <laughs> when I'm not drinking we went hiking like like last summer and like the entire trip I was just like flashing my butt because I'm like what else is there to do and then my friend Rachel's like you can get arrested for that I'm like <laughs> can no you can no you can. Nielsa from Fuller Bama Shore the show on MTV she got arrested for flashing her boobs at a bar and like it literally was like indecent exposing yourself in public yeah so I'm probably not gonna do that anymore like picture having to call your parents like my, like I got arrested or I got arrested for showing my tits yeah like, for showing my ass also come on like that's not that bad no, no um okay I love it let's move into the ask Alyssa segment Hopefully we can give people some already some solid advice. Sad. I don't want this to end. I don't want it to end either. I feel like we can go for 9 million hours. This is also going to be the longest episode because my intro was so long. <laughs> my spill the tea segment was so long. Like, I just can't stop talking today. I know. You know what? It's okay. You know what it is? It feels good to be back. I had a week yeah. off. And when I'm in front of this mic, I'm just myself. That's the problem, though. Like, like work wants to go back and we are going back. But, like, I can't shut up. Like I like I like I really just want to talk to everyone. Like I just yeah. want to have like a good time and just chat all day long. Like I really can't. can't I know. Work. I need to just chat. You I know? know. It's tough. Do you have a tattoo? Yeah, thirteen, and then I have a smiley face on my butt. Oh yeah, I like the smiley. And then I said, if I hit a hundred k this year on Instagram, I'm gonna get foul and deranged on my other butt cheek. You're one hundred percent gonna hit a hundred k. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, it's weird sometimes, you know? Well, I was waiting for you to hit a million for like nine years it could be on TikTok. A, it could be a TikTok thing, yeah. Well, that's what's happening to me right now. I'm yeah, stuck. stuck. Happens. All right. Let's 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 give out some advice. Okay. I have been in... <laughs> we can cut that out. I have been in a relationship for two years and just found out my ex still has strong feelings for me. I love my boyfriend, but if I'm being honest... If my ex had reached out before I started dating my boyfriend, I would have 100% gotten back together with him. We only broke up because we lived in separate states for five years and there was no bad blood ever. For context, we live in the same city now and see each other all the time. Her ex? Yeah. Why am I so emotionally conflicted over this? Is it just because I love the attention? Should I brush this off or will I regret not knowing what could have been for the rest of my life? So emotionally conflicted and guilty. I need help. (gasps) Brush it off. Brush it off. He's your ex for a reason. I don't care. Oh, I think they need to be together. <laughs> no, I don't care if it was be just because like of long distance. Like he's an ex for a reason. No, but she said there's no bad blood. And she's seeing him. That's terrible. If No, no, I don't think they're. 
intentionally seeing each other. I think they're running into each other because they live in the same city. If I was her boyfriend, I'd be pissed. Well, he probably doesn't know. Bitch. Like, <laughs> no, you ha- like, I tell Connor everything. I'm just like an open book. But like, no. ah, oh, that sucks. That really sucks. Wow. I kind of like that we have different opinions. Yeah, though. that sucks though. Okay, because this is, let me give you my side. Okay. Okay. I think we're the angel and the devil right yeah. now. Yeah. I think I'm probably the devil though. I think that it what if it's her one true love and they broke up and now she's with someone and she loves him but like her love of her life is this other guy yeah but I know I understand no here's the thing people people have this reality of people when they're not with them yes so you so like there must have been obviously like the distance thing was probably like Mm -hmm. she said was the reason why they broke up but I honestly think that you break up for a reason you know what I'm saying like she's fantasizing about this person that she used to be with only remembering the good you're only remembering the good and also like you don't know how it would be if you actually like you were if you were with them in real life like every single day do you know what I'm saying yeah because also long distance relationships they're not real sorry oopsie like I just said it but like you can't I I was I've been in long distance relationship mm-hmm. I was in a long distance relationship like for a year and I saw the I saw the guy twice or three times yeah. do you know what I'm saying and like and I thought I loved him I thought I was like gonna fall I, like, was, I thought I was gonna marry him and I'm like like literally looking back I'm like first of all the guy was an asshole second of all and there's really no bad blood but like second of all like he was not who I thought he was. Like I was making this fantasy about him. Like I thought like I put him on a pedestal and you don't, that's not it. You know, mine was the opposite where I was so in love and then we did long distance and then I fell out of love because of the long distance, which happens because I was like, we're just friends. Right. Right. Because there's no spark. You can't be physical. Right. But I also think like for this girl, she is, she is thinking about the things that she can't have. And that's why she's thinking about this person as if like, like, he's the best person to be with you know like my boy like her boyfriend doesn't mean anything but what if but okay devil's advocate if if you loved this guy more she shouldn't be with currently love (laughs) she shouldn't be with him either sorry she should actually she she should should, she should just find she should just be by herself wait why because if you're questioning that yeah that sucks for the guy like I, yeah. And I'm not trying to be like a bitch, but honestly, like you, that means that you need to grow. You need a little bit of mm. growing, you know, like if you're you, conflicted, if you're conflicted like that, you know, like I think that I think that you fall, you, you love so many people in your lifetime, you know, and you do and you there's like different parts of your life where you're going to fall for someone and she could love this guy and they could be really good for each other. But like the conflicting thing is if you're thinking about your ex and thinking about wanting to be with your ex, then you probably should just take a step back from your own relationship yeah. and just find yourself and like be by yourself for a little bit you know I like that because I think you could be by yourself and then see Mm -hmm. maybe your feelings disappear for this other guy Mm -hmm. maybe they go back to your boyfriend Mm -hmm. maybe like I like that Mm -hmm. maybe it's hard I agree with Kate when she's saying like when you break up with someone it's so easy to only remember the positives Mm -hmm. and not the negatives of what made you break up if you're breaking up with them if they're breaking up with you all you remember is the bad stuff because I've been broken Uh, up with twice uh and like all I know all I remember is like the bad stuff like I just I just think about like everything that like how they wronged me do you know what Mm. I'm saying like like all the like the like the things that just make me go gross like you're nasty yes. like you you know I'm also really good at flipping the switch on someone like oh, if same. I feel like you disrespected me mm-hmm. in any way I'm like you're dead to me mm-hmm. like I, will I just never don't put up with shit anymore you know and I think and I also think that like you have to have respect for some people especially if this like for the, this girl if she loves her boyfriend her current boyfriend mm-hmm. She should have respect for him enough to even to if she is seeing this guy, like if she's running into him, you should say that. Because like I've ran into people, I've gotten texts and I always tell Connor about these things. I have nothing to hide, you know, mm-hmm. like I would rather have these conversations and not like. And also that just is based on like my parents relationship and like how they had a falling out and how my dad cheated on my mom. Like I want open conversations. I want real. I don't want this like behind closed doors shit. Totally. You know what I'm saying? Because like I want I think to that's trust you. Healthy that is healthy the second you hide something then then yeah. you, then that's unhealthy like yes. she just needs to be open and just like it it's okay sometimes you outgrow people too you know like maybe if she's thinking her about her ex-boyfriend that doesn't mean she's necessarily outgrowing her new boyfriend you know like mm. I think that she just needs to find herself a little bit more and like maybe be alone also like at this age that's okay too you know just to yeah. take a step back and be like I love you a lot like but for me my priorities are this this and the other thing and like I kind of just need to like get my shit together 
I also think when you go from relationship to relationship, not sure if she did that or not, but I think you never really get to like know yourself Mm-mm. that well. Mm-mm. And I think it's really beneficial to be single mm-hmm. and just be like, this is me time. I agree. Completely. Okay. Next one. This one's wild. Oh God. It's short, but sweet, but you'll see. Hi, my boyfriend of four months has never given me, I'm a female, oral sex, even though I give it to him all the time. I've even mentioned how I want it and asked why he's never given it to me. I'm afraid he is scared or not experienced. Maybe he thinks I'm unclean. Please. Okay. I think it's preference, to be honest with you. Like, if she wants it, then she needs to vocalize it. Well, she said she's told him. Oh, she's told him. Okay. This is hard. It's hard. It's like, it's like very hard. It's a, it's, I feel like it's like a hard answer or question for me to answer because I personally don't like it like I don't really I don't I don't like that it doesn't like get me off in any kind of way Uh, like I would rather just like have like penetration (laughs) you know I guess I feel like though if you do like it and you want it and he's not even trying right that would make me feel not desirable. Totally I think that they need to like you have to sit down have a conversation be like what is like what what are you scared of? Like, what's what's the thing that what what's the thing that's holding you back from doing this? Yeah, is because, it me? Yeah, because is it because here's nervous? the reality of it. As a girl, as a female, yes, like our vaginas, they do smell sometimes. I'm sorry, like it it is what it is. Like, like it, it, it is what it is. Yeah, but it's a dark. It's so a, do men's parts. Uh, exactly. No, exactly. Yeah. Like penises smell too. Like it, yeah. it like it's there's sweat. Like there's things happening. Like yeah. our pH balance could be off. Like all of these different things. That does not mean we are dirty in any mm-hmm. way. So like that shit would piss me off. One. Like if if Connor said that I would I'm, be insulted. If Connor said that I'm dirty, I'd be like, fuck you. Like, like that's like rude. Yeah. You know? So like having these conversations, sitting them down, like what what's driving you not to like do something that I want, you know? Like yeah. because I think it should be a good give and take in the bedroom. Like I really do I almost feel like he's nervous and if he's nervous then you have to then you have to teach them you have to like be patient you have to like be like okay this is like what I want like this is like how I want it and like but like don't you feel like guys watch porn they do but I also think that even even watching it like you have to get adjusted to the way that you are like it's even how like kissing like yeah like some the first kiss might not be good I always judged like whether or not I wanted to kiss this person again if from the first kiss me like, too if they were a bad kisser I'd be like no thanks no like, same I still do that and like I think when you're like with someone it's different because it's like a comfort zone you can really just like have conversations sit down being like this is like what I like you know yeah let's try it this way and like just be like just t- tell him that this is something that you want and like especially if you're going down on him often that's what's weird like also like 69 yeah like that's, it yeah like just like have like both you know yeah I think I think keeping it spicy and like keeping it fresh in the bedroom is important and making sure that it doesn't like stay stagnant and I know it's only been four months but still like I would just openly have these conversations being like let's talk about it like what makes you nervous like because here's the here's the facts about mm-hmm. a vagina sit him down tell him that like sometimes pH, here's a diagram sometimes ph balances are off like 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 I can shower before I can do this I can do that you know like it's very easy fixable things but I yeah. also think that I'm- like he if you're giving if you're giving it to him then he definitely she should be reciprocating in some way well I'm also curious to know how old they are because I feel like if you're younger maybe he's Nervous. afraid of yeah. like experience he doesn't yeah. have experience right if you're like older like 30s and like that's weird right you personally, know what I mean like personally I don't like that and like my friends and I have talked about it like none of my friends really love getting eaten out like I feel like they just haven't had like it good then I I like I've had like like I've been in a relationship for four years. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's good, you know, yeah. it's good. But like, it's just not something like, cause I, there's like a process, you know, like when mm. like, you're like, I know the process and I know what's going to get you me off. You know the algorithm. Yeah. I know the algorithm. <laughs> I know what's yeah. going to get me off. Like, why am I going to experiment? Like, I mean, obviously like there are things that like, definitely you need to freshen up. You need yeah. to like, do things to like, keep and, like it spicy. experiment. Yeah. Totally. But like at the end of the day, I just want to get off, you know? I just want to, like... You know what works for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, I think also just telling he, telling him that, too, being like, I know that this is going to get me off. Like, help me out here. I also wonder if he's getting her off when they're having sex or right. anything anyway. There's a lot of... There's a lot of questions to there's a lot of this variables. question you yeah know? yeah because I think I think but even just saying it kind of like that being like I know and it's it's kind of like it can get guys butt hurt sometimes when you bring up like past experiences being like I know this has gotten me off in the past mm. so I wouldn't say it like that but just be like I just like 
I know that I really like this. So like maybe let's try it out or just be yeah like I think women just have to be more vocal about what they like and what works for them definitely and if he's and if he's being like annoying about like any of the variables about like (laughs) your vagina smelling be like grow the fuck up like literally (laughs) literally grow up you're like butthole smells like (laughs) yeah it's like and you think I love the way you smell yeah like no exactly have you smelled sweaty balls it's disgusting (laughs) nothing's worse (laughs) It's disgusting. It's like guys think that they're God's gift. And it's they really like, do. They really do. They think that they their shit doesn't sting. <laughs> Bitch, your shit fucking stinks. It's like they're grosser than us. Yeah, yeah. Like just tell them to grow up. Be like, go down, grow up. <laughs> also, if he says that it's because of that, I'd be like, see ya. I'd be annoyed. I would like, be I would be pissed, pissed off. One time a guy in college told me that I wasn't fun because I didn't have sex with him. And it literally like pissed me off so fucking much. I'm like, okay, first of all, I was drunk as fuck. So like I passed out. <laughs> sorry for sleeping. Sorry, sorry for literally passing out yeah. while you were hooking up. My bad. You're boring as fuck, apparently, because I you passed out. You couldn't keep me awake. I passed out. So have uh, fun with that. Oh, guys that are like say stuff like that. Like one time I had this guy, I went on multiple dates with him, but I just didn't feel like he was taking me seriously. Yeah. Like he was kind of like, I'd hear from him every two weeks. Yeah. So like I wasn't giving him anything yeah. because I'm like, you treat me like a respectable woman. Yeah. And then maybe we could talk about it. But yeah. And then I remember one time we were at my apartment and he's like, you know, we've been out like four times. Nothing has happened. And I was like, yeah, exactly yeah because you're not consistent yeah. and you're not respecting yeah. me and the moment you respect me maybe then you'll get something from me right. I, like I'm so like that no and I think I'm that's like, good because guys expect guys expect to have sex with you and like on the first date like like knowing just like what my friends go through like obviously I've been I've been I've been taken for a while yeah. but like knowing what my friends go through like they just expect expect especially in New York City like mm-hmm. these guys in New York City and like I would just say any city because like one of my other best friends in Boston they just expect sex on the first date and like that's just like not it that's not it it's not it and I think there's some instances where you could like have sex with someone on the first date and you end up dating and then totally. there's other instances where you make them wait and it works like I don't think there's like a code Mm -mm. but it's about doing what you're comfortable with right right stand your ground fuck that exactly stand your fucking ground okay last question okay ask Alyssa okay this might be a long one my future mother-in-law just outed my boyfriend's cheating on me history in their whole family group chat we have dealt with the cheating situation years ago and have been together nine plus years. The situation happened when we were in high school and we are now in our mid-20s and have been living together for four years and just bought our first first home together. We've been together through high school and college. I trust him more than anyone else. Do I let this go or is it justified for me to feel disrespect- disrespected? My boyfriend is completely on my side and it really put the relationship with his mother and me to an end, but I don't want it to because of me sorry that was a little weird my boyfriend is completely on my side and it really put the relationship with his mother to an end but I don't want it to because of me he told her she needed to apologize to me for hurting my feelings and embarrassing me but all she said was sorry you shouldn't be so offended by your truth please help her and I have never seen eye to eye she is a high functioning alcoholic and has burned the bridge with my boyfriend multiple times, but it is hard because she is his mother. She asks us to drop everything. Um, she asks us to drop, sorry, everything. She asks us to drop everything to help her, usually financially, and then makes us both feel bad for wanting to focus on each other and the life we are building together. I mean, first off, if my boyfriend cheated on me, I'd be gone. But they worked through it. Because they've been together for nine years. Congratulations. Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. Sorry, I, I'm you, such, no. No, no, but you have a history of family right. infidelity. So you right. obviously have a really strong stance yeah, on this. Yeah, I do. But let me just put it this way. Again, always devil's advocate. They were together in high school and then college. If the cheating happens in high school, I think that's a little different. It's de- it's definitely different, but I also, I also will say this. A cheater will always be a cheater. Like, I found out. You believe that. Thousand percent. I found out, like, obviously my dad cheated on my mom, but I found out he was doing it for years. Yeah. yeah. Like, when I was little. Like, he's been, like, and people change, for sure, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I, I agree with that, but I also just think that, like, with the track record, 
I don't know. And I don't like, again, it doesn't really matter if it's in high school or college or like wherever, like you're in your mid twenties. You don't want to be with someone like someone's going to put you on a pedestal and treat you right. I also think just like from experience with moms and like having Mm -hmm. like relationships with like mother-in-laws and stuff like that. Like my mom and my grandma, like never like, like my dad's mom, like never really saw eye to eye either. And it really wasn't my mom's fault. Like she was just like, yeah kind of nuts oops I don't really talk to my grandma so whatever I don't think she's gonna be watching this (laughs) we're just outing everyone (laughs) whoopsie um no but I think that just like that you want a good relationship with your with your mother-in-law and your and your father-in-law and stuff like that you want that relationship with them you know it's tough this woman's a functioning alcoholic right so that's also another that's another hard because okay this is how I feel like she's chose chosen to forgive him right so that's fine that's, that's great. their truth so that, they're yep, together yep. you've chosen to forgive him yep. it's been nine years you bought a house together so it looks like things are progressing her in the mom, relationship his mom called him out saying that they he were cheated, cheated. in a family group chat and yeah. she brought up him cheating on her like five years ago or whenever it was to the whole family so knowing that she's a functioning alcoholic too like this is where you have to take things with a grain of salt that's how I feel like you guys like if you want to be with if you guys are happy and in love yeah. and you have squashed the beef and everything and you trust him, amazing. Like, I'm very happy for you guys. You know, like, that's that's great. But I also just think, like, knowing your past relationship and knowing what he's done and you've squashed that, take it with a grain of salt. You know, it, it I, I know that it fucking probably hurts when she did say yeah. that. It's like a, like a little stab, you know? But it's I, kind of like we've done all this to move on and like, you're like, boom. But I also just think you just, you take it and you just kind of move on or or remove yourself from the group chat well that's also I feel the exact same way it's like we don't really trust her judgment anyway this no woman. no so it's like if you don't value her morals or what she has to say why should this be any different right it's like she's a shit starter probably right, right. like she says stuff she puts her foot in her mouth right so I feel like you I mean it, if your husband doesn't want to have a relationship with his mother because of multiple reasons like you said her taking money from you or right. whatever whatever then that's his personal choice yeah. I don't think maybe this is just the straw that broke the camel's back but it sounds to me like there's probably deep-rooted issues with this woman to begin with so maybe you just know the kind of mother-in-law she'll be or mm-hmm. or grandma she'll be to your Mm -hmm. kids and you just have to be like this is her and you just can't expect anything from her right and and the thing is like you have to also know that you're not putting that wedge between you and him she's doing that for you and you have to stand your ground Mm -hmm. and you have to show that like like if you want to have a relationship with him that's fine that's great all good you know he's your son but like we don't have to have a relationship like if you're going to disrespect me it's okay to walk away yeah it's okay to not have that relationship with her you you can put as much effort as you want into that relationship for him Mm -hmm. you know like if he wants you guys to go to do a holiday thing and he really wants you to be there put the effort in for him but you don't have to do you all you don't owe her anything you I know? totally agree you you owe her nothing you know and so take that with a grain of salt but also just like be be proceed with caution you know because mm-hmm. again like just from personal experience it it sucks you know like mm-hmm. you want you want to and you don't want those things to come back up like as far as like cheating and all that yeah. stuff. But if you've moved forward and you bought a house and you're doing all these great things, that's amazing. But just proceed with caution. Also, one last thing. The other flip side of that is if his family didn't already know, now everyone knows and it's out in the open and it's no longer like the secret. Right. So it's like it, she can never bring it up again and everyone be shocked. Right. It's like she ripped the bandaid off. Also, if, <laughs> if you already been through it and you know about it and you've talked about it with him and you guys had these conversations, that's for you guys. Like mm-hmm. he cheated on you. He didn't cheat on his mom. He didn't cheat on his dad. He didn't cheat on his brother. He didn't cheat on anyone. He cheated on you. And if you've had these conversations and you've worked through it, that's amazing. You yeah. know, then, then, then move forward. You know, don't let anyone else like right on your parade you mm-hmm. know that's not that's not fair it, yeah because it sounds like her and him were a united front about it right and it's just the mom that's, that's like, like being a bitch so it's like yeah it's like whatever we're fine so that's on her right all right Agreed. that that's that's the interview kate that's it i know it was an hour oh my god i could talk forever we could talk all day where could where could everyone follow you um on tiktok at kate on instagram at kate norca lunas I love that her handle it. on TikTok is literally just it's just Kate at Kate. Yep. Um, amazing. Thank you so much for Thanks, coming on. Thanks, Alyssa. <laughs>
All right, guys, let's spill some tea. So as I mentioned in the opening portion of the pod, my laptop crashed. And the thing that I'm most upset about my laptop crashing, which I didn't mention because I needed to save it for the segment, is the fact that obviously I have my work laptop, which is amazing. I could take it home. I could watch Hulu, whatever. My personal laptop was the one that I purchased the VPN on, which gives me access to UK television. Oh, no. So you can't watch live anymore? I was so deep in a UK spiral. I was watching. Okay, so I was watching Love Island every night. Then I went back and I started watching Olivia Atwood's show. She was a contestant on season three. Her and her new fiance have a spinoff called Olivia Met Her Match. I watched season one. I was starting season two. I was deep into the UK TV bubble. Next, I wanted to watch Towie. Then I was going to watch Made in Chelsea. Like, I, having this VPN opened up my world to UK reality yeah. TV. Yeah. And poof. And now you don't have it. I'm behind on on Love Island. I need to see if I could maybe, like, log into this computer. Right. And- yeah. Oh, I'm just devastated. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really devastated. But then I go on the Love Island UK Instagram and like look at all the spoilers anyway. But like, it's just not the same. I like to watch things in real time. That's why I bought the VPN. I know it's going to be on Hulu in like two days, but I need it as it airs. Yeah. You need the gossip oh, sooner I'm just than devastated. later. Um, Love Island US also started, which obviously I'm watching. Um, my favorites, just like going off of like looks in terms of men, not personality, because I know some of them are absolute trash. But I think his name's Josh, the cute little like baseball player with the blue eyes and like the curly hair. And then um, Jeremy, the like long haired buff Guido juice head. Um, he's also like 27 and from New York. So like maybe we could. Hug up. <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> hey, Jerry. Um, but you know what's so funny, though? Have you seen it or no? No, I haven't yet. So Jeremy, like, is really quiet on the show and, like, really reserved. Yeah. And if you asked me three years ago, what's your type? I'd be like, athletic, quiet, reserved. Like, I like quiet. Yeah, I like, thought, keeps to themselves. I thought I liked that. Yeah. Now that I'm like a full grown adult, I'm like, I don't, I actually do think I need someone with more personality. Mm -hmm. Like I used to love quiet, awkward men. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe because like you are very personable. So you can kind of like take the reins. And it's more just like, I don't mind if you're quiet as long as when we're together, you could be goofy and like funny. Like yourself. Yeah. Exactly. But like, he's almost so reserved that I'm like. Uh, it's almost like pulling teeth. Yeah, right. So it's harder to have it's a conversation. Hard. Yeah, so now I'm like, I think I outgrew my old type. Yeah, and also when you go places with them, you don't want to have to worry about standing by them mm-hmm. the whole time and trying to have, like, to hold their hand, basically. Yeah, like, he seems like the kind of guy I would have went four or five years ago, mm-hmm. um, which is funny. So yeah. Love Island, U.S., <laughs> it's good. Obviously, it's not the U.K., but, like, it's a vibe. It's always a vibe. Um, Gossip Girl started, I, after the laptop sitch, (laughs) then I'm like on my smart TV. Luckily my friend's HBO Max login is on my TV because we watched, um, that like Kate Winslet show together. What's it called? Oh, Mayor of Easttown. We watched that. So it was just logged into my TV. Issue is I was trying to watch the first episode of Gossip Girl and my computer kept freezing every, like it. It was glitching, so I only watched, like, the first 10 minutes, and I couldn't finish the episode because I was just, like, for whatever reason, the app on my TV was not working, so I will be watching Gossip Girl. I hear people's cries. Like, people are like, it's not the same. It's not as good. It's, like, chill. It was one episode. It's just, I don't think it's supposed to be a clone of the old show. Yeah, like, all, re- not reruns, um... Like, even movies that have two parts. Like, the second part's never the best one. It's and always also like, just, like... But this isn't even with the same characters. Right. Do like, you know it's what a I completely mean? different show. Yeah. Just with the same concept. The only thing I will say is that I found... I'm not going to call her out by name because that's rude. But I found one of the actresses to be, like, really bad. Oh. Like, I don't... It was just very... Um, like, cringy. No. It just felt very... Like okay, I'm acting now versus yeah. just not, just being natural. Yeah, like, yep, yeah. You know what? A good a good actress doesn't seem like they're you acting. You would never know, yeah. Yeah, it was very much like, 
Okay, you could tell acting. it was scripted. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. th- that was the only thing. And maybe it gets better once again. Like they're all kids. Like maybe they get more comfortable. Mm-hmm. But right now, really, is the mecca of TV. I watched <laughs> um, Too Hot to Handle, obviously season two. I think that one guy is complete trash. Um, who is he? The uh, the one that like broke all the rules at the beginning. No, the mm-hmm. the guy that was dating the blonde. Oh, oh, like the fo- the Corey. football player? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? I forgot Corey. his name. I know, Corey. I'm getting them confused. With- you from the challenge? No, I'm getting it confused with Love Island oh. US <laughs> and Love Island UK. And, like, I'm watching too many um, of the same shows and they all look the same. And I'm, oh my I God. I do forget Wait, his I'm, name. I'm going to go yeah. to Harry Jowsey's TikTok. Oh, yeah. But there was also, yeah. yeah, there's also been drama on Instagram between all the Love Island people, I feel like. Oh, his name is Chase. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Guys. Chase, dude. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm yeah, and now they all are hanging out with Harry Jowsey and making TikToks and... Like... It's, like, so strange. Fine, but Chase... <sighs> okay. I just think something about his online persona. I listened to him on Harry Jowsey's podcast. Oh, Okay. And oh yeah, because all three of those guys were on his podcast. Yes, he had Peter Chase, and then like the the like other one with um the muscles, the stripper. Yes. What's his name? Nathan. Yep. Harry had them on his podcast. Tap in, and Chase was so cringy. Oh really? Like it was really bad. Yeah. And I'm like, is it just me who's like picking up on these f boy vibes? Right. And then I went to the comments, oh. and every single person was like saying the same thing. Wow, that's funny. It was, it was just, uh, he just kind of was like talking like, I'm the man. I, I fuck everyone. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, dude. I'm so high. <laughs> and now they're all making cringy TikToks. And it's yeah. just like, I feel like they're trying to be ha- like Harry, but Harry's one in, like Harry's one in a million. Yeah. He just has that personality. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That like worked and I don't know. Yeah. But my favorite's Melinda. Oh yeah. She's I DM'd hysterical. Her. Like, oh I, really? I need her to come on the pod. She's so funny. And she, she seems very genuine. But I don't know if she's ever going to see my DM because her shit's so flooded. Yeah, especially now once the show's I know, on. but she's in New York. Oh, okay. And same with Peter. You know what? I'd love to have them on together. Yeah. Maybe I'll DM him. Maybe oh, he'll yeah, see maybe. it. Yeah. Oh, I need to have them on because <laughs> I just absolutely love Melinda. I think she's so, so yeah, amazing. Yeah, she's hysterical too. Okay, we're going to post this clip on TikTok and maybe it will get their attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Melinda, Peter, please come on. We're in New York. Come to Barstool. <laughs> um, and then what other shows were on? There were so... Wait, oh, I made a list. I made a list of television. I posted it to my Instagram stories. If you guys aren't following me there, you're lost because <laughs> that shit is popping on my stories. So, okay, here's what's on right now that I'm watching and or need to watch. Okay, Siesta Key. Explosive. So good. It's so good. Serena Kerrigan, who was on my podcast, made her debut. Yes. Killing it. Love Island UK, Love Island US, The Hills. Like, spoiler alert, Brody Brody Jenner and Audrina Patridge, Patridge, hooking up. Patridge, yeah. Like, yeah, when I found that out, I was like, I was like, whoa. Like, I, and she was in the car with when Kristen was in the episode, and yes. she was just like in the car and she was super awkward about it. I honestly ship. Yeah, I do too. Um, okay, Gossip Girl, like I said, Real Housewives of New York absolutely sucks. Ebony's carrying the show. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Big Brother just started. Oh, yeah. Do you watch Big Brother? I do. I haven't. I forgot to watch it this week, so I need to start I was going to say, I could see you being a Big Brother girl. Yeah, I've seen like a couple seasons, but not. But Big I Brothers, do love it. It's a Hibley. It is. Oh, yeah. You know. Especially like, it's on. It's on like three days a week. Yeah. It's like so hard to keep up with, but you just have to do it's it. It's a Big Hibley because it's really, really bad, but you love it, it anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's so good. Um, The Bachelor. Oh, Okay. Sorry, this is going to be the longest episode, but I have a lot to say today because I've been gone for a while. You guys, I need to issue an apology <laughs> to Katie. She's absolutely killing it. And, uh, you know, I never said that I didn't like her or anything. I just said I'm not sure. We didn't see that much of her. Katie is an absolutely wonderful bachelorette. Yeah. I really think she's so good. Mm-hmm. I think she is... The best thing about her is how down to earth she is. Mm-hmm. Like she comes from humble beginnings. She's non-judgmental. 
she's like a straight shooter. She's super confident. She cuts like the guys that suck. I just think that she's doing like a fabulous job. And I think what's right with this season is the fact that we're actually getting to know her as a lead. And I think the biggest mistake with Matt James season was that like Matt's a fun loving cool guy. And like we didn't get to know him. They at only, all yeah they only showed the drama they only showed the drama the girls yeah we're actually getting to know kate mm-hmm. katie yeah and michael a obviously angel baby yeah um greg hot as hell oh, i love him greg you could Emotional, also <laughs> love him you could also hit me up <laughs> i know you're in the area um i think it's else? funny too like katie is so she's kind of just like quirky and like uh-huh. uh, so sometimes things are a little bit cringe but she loves it like for like the cat thing for oh. example Everybody watching that was like, what is this guy doing? He's going to get kicked off. And she was obsessed with it. I know. So she I think like, it's I just like it. you kind of have to come to terms with the fact that she's just like is who she is. And that's not not saying she's weird. She just like has her own little like things mm-hmm. that she likes. But you're just like, oh, yeah, that's funny. OK, she likes it. Whatever. Who cares what we think? And may I say, great kisser. Yeah. She is yeah, yeah. a absolutely great kisser. <laughs> she kisses every single person with so much passion (laughs) that I'm like oh my god she's in love with him wait no she's in love with him yeah she's because they all have sparks and Mm -hmm. I'm like damn Katie could yeah like, and you can tell like through watching it she is a good kisser <laughs> and that's the kind of kissing I like that's like slow I hate when people go in like especially on like the UK TV shows they go in and kiss and it's like oh and you can hear all the noises oh literally and disgusting. it's moving quick yeah, and yeah. it's like the, the way they're kissing so many there's so many tongues and there's like so much movement yeah no we like a sensual kisser and Katie is that Okay, moving on. I'm watching Legacies, and by watching, I'm kind of on hiatus because I watched The Vampires. I told you guys this last week, I think. I watched The Vampire Diaries. I watched The Originals. I watched The Legacies. Legacies is the worst show ever. It's trash. Don't watch it. Um, I need to watch Sex Life. I know, I know, I know. It's amazing. Penis, whatever. But I think I need to be in, like, a certain headspace to, like, watch porn. So, basically... I haven't started yet because I'm not really just like feeling like watching porn on like a Tuesday evening while I eat dinner. Yeah. Like I need to like, you know, that's like a weekend. Be ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Like (laughs) prepare yourself. Yeah. You can't just like pop in an episode and watch graphic sex and then like go about your day. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. No, I literally (laughs) on the rundown, which is another show here that I edit, they were talking about it before break and it was the one scene that's very famous, I Mm -hmm. guess the shower scene and the guys like penis is just like huge in it and And I literally had to pull it up at work because they they were watching it on their phone obviously I couldn't show it on like the edit of the show that I was editing but I was like okay what and their reactions were wild so I was like okay I have to see what it is and it's literally insane well that's my point like I don't know if I could just like oh let me like watch a an episode and then like head to the gym yeah exactly I need to like binge this I need to be alone I need to be in a dark room like you you can't just like watch that so that's how I'm feeling um Outer Banks is coming back at the end of the month uh, and then everyone was DMing me telling me I need to watch Cruel Summer which like again I need to be in a mindset to watch like a spooky show I'm much more like vapid reality tv type of gal but anyway um there's obviously some like celeb sightings ASAP Rocky and Rihanna and then like um Zendaya kissing Tom Holland which like I don't really know anything about them and like I don't care and I don't think I would date a guy shorter than me. I know yeah. But whatever I love it for yeah, them. Yeah Like for them. whatever floats your boat. Yeah. No judgment here. <laughs> um, and yeah like there's no one else I still don't care about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. Yeah. Everyone agrees it's staged. Yeah it's just like whatever. It's just like okay. Like the matching cool. outfits okay. It's we get like it. Something's <laughs> fake. Yeah. Um yeah so like tv's really my sweet spot right now so dm me if you guys want me to do lives after like big Big brother or the bachelor or anything on tiktok and maybe i'll like recap some shows um like get on with like rod or like louis levante or someone and do a little a little recapping okay guys that's it for today thank you for sticking through this long episode i hope you enjoyed it if you are new here Subscribe to the pod. Follow me, Tea with Publicity, on Instagram, Publicity on 
regular Instagram. And then also, I should have mentioned this earlier, but Hot Girl Summer merch is out. Waxed and Vaxed Flight 2021 with the Hot Girl Anthem on the back. New merch is out. Journals for our self-care scribbles are launching later this week. So stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram. All the updates go there. And I will see you next Tuesday.